Patterson takes us on an extraordinary journey through the ordinary life of Patterson, a bus driver residing in Patterson, New Jersey. This captivating film delves deep into the realms of simplicity and poetry that often go unnoticed amidst the daily grind. Through meticulous storytelling, Patterson reveals the profound beauty that can be found in the most mundane aspects of life. As the film unfolds, we become immersed in Patterson's world, where the ordinary becomes extraordinary. Each day, he traverses the city's streets, encountering a diverse array of inhabitants, and witnessing the ebb and flow of their lives. With a keen eye and a listening ear, he absorbs the essence of his surroundings, capturing the essence of these encounters in the pages of his secret notebook. We catch a glimpse of Patterson's ordinary life as both a bus driver and a poet, although he was once a soldier. Despite treating his day job with professionalism, he manages to maintain his identity as an artist. Patterson wakes up in the morning beside his wife, Laura. In a conversation, Laura asks about their desire for twins, and Patterson affirms their shared wish. He follows his usual routine of getting up and having cereal for breakfast, enjoying a slow morning. Then, he heads off early to work as a bus driver in New Jersey. The presence of twins is a recurring theme in this film, which brings a heavy symbol of luck and misfortune. In the midst of his shifts, Patterson's thoughts often drift towards the matches that fill their home, a phrase that ignites the flame of his creativity and becomes the opening line of his poetic masterpiece. As he waits for passengers to board his bus, he steals moments of solitude to delve into his dedicated notebook, carefully crafting the first stanza of his evolving poem. Driving through the city's streets, Patterson's life may seem monotonous on the surface, yet there exists an underlying tranquility in his routine. It is within this rhythm of his everyday existence that he finds inspiration for his art. The diverse array of passengers he encounters, the snippets of conversations he overhears, these seemingly ordinary encounters become the fuel for his poetic expressions. One day, as he takes his breaks amidst the hum of the bus engine, Patterson's attention is caught by the intriguing conversation of two children discussing a mysterious man who possesses the power to shoot people. The humorous exchange sparks his curiosity and becomes a source of amusement during his idle moments. Seizing these pockets of time, he delves deeper into his evolving poem, intricately weaving together vivid descriptions of the Ohio blue tip matchbox. Through his words, he explores its hues, its design, and the symbolism it holds, drawing parallels to the woman he loves, his eternal muse, whom he perceives with renewed admiration. As his poem takes shape, it becomes evident that Patterson holds a deep reverence for Dante, the celebrated poet of the past. Through his verses, he weaves an intricate tapestry of emotions, intertwining his own experiences with the timeless expressions of love and devotion found in Dante's work. In Patterson's eyes, his wife embodies the essence of Dante's Beatrice, a source of inspiration and the guiding light in his creative journey. As the day draws to a close, Patterson returns to the comforts of their cozy, small house, where his creative and ambitious wife, Laura, resides. Laura, driven by her own passions, dreams of opening a cupcake store, and finds solace in her artwork, sharing a mutual appreciation for creativity with Patterson. She eagerly reads his poems, serving as his trusted confidante, and offering the much-needed encouragement for him to share his writing with a wider audience. As part of his evening routine, Patterson takes their beloved pug, Marvin, for a nighttime walk through the quiet streets of their neighborhood. He pauses outside a local bar, tying Marvin to a post before stepping inside to join the locals. He sees Sam and his twin brother, Dave. Within the bar's walls, conversations flow and soulful tunes resonate, as Patterson engages with his friends, who possess an ardent love for soul jazz singers. The bar's enigmatic proprietor, Doc, a chess enthusiast, offers a distinct presence, finding solace in the strategic game, even when playing against himself. Patterson indulges in a drink, marking the end of the day, as Monday slowly fades away, giving way to the arrival of a new day. Tuesday dawns upon Patterson, and he wakes up at the familiar hour. He expresses admiration for his wife's vivid dreams, as Laura reveals her dream of Patterson in ancient Persia, setting the tone for their random morning conversations. They share moments of connection and affection before Patterson embarks on his day's journey. Once again, he finds himself drawn to the Ohio blue tip matches, contemplating their significance as he completes his latest poem. As he carries out his duties as a bus driver, Patterson engages in a brief exchange with his colleague, Donnie, expressing genuine concern for his well-being. Unexpectedly, Donnie unloads a series of distressing experiences, leaving Patterson unsure of the authenticity behind these tales. Nevertheless, he puts on his professional demeanor and assumes his role behind the wheel. During his shift, Patterson's ears catch fragments of a conversation among passengers discussing an attractive woman from a nearby donut shop who turns out to be their neighbor. The man shares his encounters with this woman, receiving positive responses and hinting at a potential connection. However, their interaction is abruptly cut short as she leaves, casting disdainful glances toward the men on the bus. This sparks a conversation among the passengers, sharing anecdotes and stories of their own experiences with flirtatious women. 
Patterson finds it intriguing that these friends have encountered a similar situation, realizing that their lives are intertwined with these seemingly mundane encounters. Meanwhile, back at their home, Laura immerses herself in her artistic pursuits, painting new curtains that constantly evolve and reflect her vibrant creativity. As Patterson crafts another poem for the day, he discreetly hides it in a stockroom within their house. The topic of sharing his poetry with the world arises once again during a conversation with Laura. Recognizing the potential impact his words could have beyond the confines of his notebook, they contemplate making copies of his poems. Laura urges Patterson to use a photocopy machine, a request she has been making for an extended period. Patterson hesitates, but eventually agrees, promising to fulfill her wish over the upcoming weekend. Laura contemplates her own desire to play the guitar, and the power of music to amplify her creative expressions. Laura's aspirations go beyond their cupcake business, as she reveals her dream of becoming a musician. Patterson's reaction reveals a mix of emotions, but his love for Laura prompts him to embrace and support her dreams wholeheartedly. During his customary evening walk with Marvin, Patterson's routine takes an unexpected turn when a group of young boys draws his attention to the possibility of his dog being stolen. Coining the term, dogject. Their cautionary advice lingers in Patterson's mind as he continues his stroll. Arriving at the bar, Patterson ties Marvin outside and enters to join his friends. Doc introduces him to Marie, a spirited and vibrant woman with whom he shares laughter and a genuine connection. Their encounter is pleasant until Marie's ex-boyfriend, Everett, makes an entrance, attempting to reconcile with her. While Patterson and Everett, an actor, share a tacit acquaintance, they remain at a distance, observing each other from afar. In a moment of vulnerability, Everett turns to Patterson, seeking advice on navigating the complexities of unrequited love. Unbeknownst to Everett, Patterson stifles his laughter, unaware of the context behind Everett's question. This unintentional reaction sparks a sense of offense within Everett, creating a subtle tension in the air. Curiously, the name Patterson not only refers to the protagonist but also signifies the city itself, where these interconnected lives unfold. Despite the absence of spoken words, a silent acknowledgement passes between the characters, prompting a toast to their shared existence in Patterson, an unspoken bond that unites them. As Wednesday unfolds, Patterson's morning exchange with Laura is brief and devoid of their usual random conversations. A simple kiss and a few words convey their affection before he delves into his writing once more. His poem takes shape, exploring the intricacies of a box, a metaphor for the hidden depths within seemingly ordinary objects. Navigating the familiar streets of New Jersey, Patterson's journey takes an unexpected turn as he encounters a pair of twins crossing the road. This encounter serves as a poignant reminder of his earlier conversation with Laura about their shared desire for twins, reigniting those aspirations within him. Back at their cozy home, Laura immerses herself in her ongoing painting projects, infusing the space with her creative expressions. The walls are adorned with prints and patterns, reflecting her boundless inspiration. Meanwhile, Patterson composes a heartfelt poem dedicated to Laura, drawing inspiration from the symbolism of the Ohio blue tip matchbox. Surprising Patterson, Laura reveals that she has already ordered the expensive guitar she had been longing for, a manifestation of her aspirations as a musician. As evening sets in, Patterson is taken aback by the unconventional dinner choice, quinoa, a departure from their usual fare. The unexpected nature of the meal reflects the spontaneity, and unpredictability that often colors their lives. During their nightly walk with Marvin, they pass by a bustling laundry shop, where they chance upon a customer practicing his rap skills. Intrigued, they pause to listen, momentarily captivated by the rhythms and rhymes. Patterson commends the man for his talent, forging a brief connection before continuing their walk. Arriving at the bar, Patterson leaves Marvin outside and enters the serene establishment. The walls are adorned with memorabilia and portraits, paying homage to legendary singers from bygone eras. The chessboard, a centerpiece of the bar, remains undisturbed, symbolizing the solitude that envelops Patterson's presence. Despite the ambience, the evening passes quietly, with no meaningful conversations unfolding. And just like that, Wednesday draws to an end, leaving Patterson to reflect on the events of the day, the nuances of his relationships, and the quiet rhythm of his existence in Patterson, New Jersey. Thursday dawns, and Patterson falls into his familiar routine once again. Laura playfully comments on his scent as he returns home, a small but affectionate gesture between them. Skipping over the details of their breakfast, Patterson heads straight to the bus station, where the warm, golden sunlight bathes the city in a gentle glow. As he embarks on his daily bus route, he encounters yet another pair of twin girls. Overhearing a conversation between two young adults discussing Italy's history, an anarchy, Patterson's curiosity is piqued. Inspiration strikes, and he puts pen to paper, crafting a poem that captures the essence of the moment. However, his attempt to enjoy one of Laura's cupcakes takes an unexpected turn, as he struggles to finish it and nearly chokes. This gives an unspoken truth about Laura's cooking. 
even without mentioning it, that perhaps Laura should go to a cooking class. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. After parking the bus at the station, Patterson engages in a conversation with his colleague, Donnie, about their lives. Donnie's candid admission that things aren't going well serves as a reminder of the complex realities hidden behind simple exchanges. In an unexpected encounter, Patterson sits with a little girl waiting for her sister. They engage in conversation, and Patterson shares snippets of his experiences as a driver. To his delight, he discovers that the girl also writes poetry, and keeps a secret notebook, forging a connection between their own artistic selves. Patterson listens attentively as the girl reads her poem titled, Waterfalls, appreciating her use of language and offering words of encouragement. During dinner at home, Laura delivers another unconventional dish, causing Patterson to hesitate. He observes Marvin's reaction to the pie before reluctantly taking a bite, and mustering compliments for Laura's culinary creation. In the midst of the meal, Laura reminds him about the need to get his poems copied, a task that has lingered on their to-do list. Patterson recalls his encounter with the young girl, and her evocative poem about waterfalls, which leads him to gaze at a photograph on the wall. Laura becomes enthralled by the image when Patterson reads it aloud, sparking a shared moment of admiration. Fueling their aspirations, Laura purchases a batch of flour, signaling their plan to create cupcakes for selling. As night descends, Marvin remains outside the bar, faithfully waiting for Patterson. Inside, Patterson engages in conversation with Doc, sharing intriguing trivia and tales of famous individuals, revealing his deep knowledge of history. Meanwhile, Doc faces a confrontation with his wife over the spending of her personal savings. Nevertheless, he promises to return the money after an upcoming chess tournament, hinting at potential developments in their lives. Patterson, in his preference for an analog lifestyle, steers clear of technology, including mobile phones, viewing them as potential tethers. Unlike his wife, who has no problem embracing technology, the pursuit of Marie by Everett continues, raising questions about how to navigate their presence. With these thoughts lingering in his mind, Patterson wonders if there is anything they can do to address the situation with Everett, setting the stage for further exploration and contemplation in the days to come. On Friday, Patterson awakens to find himself alone, as Laura busies herself with baking cupcakes for the upcoming sale. He notices small peculiarities, such as the mailbox that he straightens every day, appearing slightly tilted to the left. Before his shift as a bus driver, he crafts another poem titled, The Run, capturing his thoughts and emotions in verse. However, Donnie, his colleague, refuses to confide in Patterson about his troubles this time. Patterson embarks on his daily journey, traversing the streets of the city, while Laura immerses herself in creative pursuits at home, envisioning a new path as a singer. During his shift, the bus experiences a breakdown due to electric failure. Fortunately, Patterson manages to assist the passengers and arranges for a replacement bus, utilizing a borrowed phone from a child on board. The presence of twins now takes on a darker significance, symbolizing potential misfortune. Back at home, Patterson discovers that Marvin, their pug is the mischievous culprit responsible for the slightly tilting mailbox, it's become his daily habit to tip it over in the afternoons. This revelation adds a touch of humor to Patterson's observations. On his way home, Patterson encounters a vagrant, and decides to offer them some money as an act of kindness. Continuing his journey, he resists the urge to fix the mailbox this time. Upon arriving home, he finds Laura strumming the guitar. Surprisingly, Laura manages to strum the instrument correctly, at least in the beginning, despite being a beginner. Laura expresses her gratitude, and the topic of getting a smartphone arises. Patterson, however, remains resistant to embracing new technology, convinced that he has managed fine without it thus far. For a change, Patterson and Laura decide to order takeout for dinner, taking a break from their usual routine. The following day marks the farmer's market sale for Laura's cupcakes, a significant event for her budding business. At the bar, Patterson extends an invitation to Doc, suggesting that they visit the farmer's market to support Laura's endeavor. However, Doc reveals his prior commitment to a chess competition, unable to join them. As the evening unfolds, Marie enters the bar, and Everett attempts to persuade her to reconcile with him. Marie sternly rejects his advances, asserting that he can never be with her. This infuriates Everett, leading him to contemplate a drastic action, shooting Marie and himself, to prevent anyone else from having her. The tension escalates, but through the combined efforts of Marie, Doc, and Patterson, they manage to dissuade Everett from carrying out his violent intentions. Swiftly, Patterson disarms him, revealing that the gun was merely a toy. On setting, a role reversal occurs as Laura wakes up before Patterson, fueled by the excitement of the farmer's market sale. The cupcakes are prepared and ready for selling, and Laura takes charge of the event, while Patterson takes Marvin for a walk. During his stroll, Patterson's thoughts wander, and he begins working on a new poem titled, Pumpkin, contemplating various aspects, including his thoughts about other women. In the evening, Laura returns home with joyous news, 
she has successfully sold all the cupcakes, generating an impressive profit of $286. The feedback from customers at the market is overwhelmingly positive, with praises for the delectable treats. Excited and wanting to celebrate their accomplishment, Laura suggests dining out and watching a movie together. They opt for a film that harkens back to their youthful days, immersing themselves in black and white films from the 1920s. On their way back home, they engage in a lively discussion about the movie they watched, relishing the nostalgia it evokes. To their surprise, the previously tilted post box they would always straighten has returned to its normal position, seemingly of its own accord. However, their black and white takes an abrupt turn when they discover the devastating aftermath of Marvin's behavior. The pug has shredded Patterson's secret notebook, tearing apart all the meticulously crafted poems. Laura is filled with remorse and offers sincere apologies, directing her anger towards Marvin. Patterson's reaction remains elusive, as he does not express visible fury or sadness. Instead, he silently leaves the scene, perhaps needing time and space to process the loss and contemplate the significance of this unexpected event. On Sunday, a shift occurs, as Patterson is the one to wake up first. He heads down to the basement, seeking solace in the works of one of his favorite poets, William Carlos Williams. In the company of Marvin, his disdain for the pug becomes evident. Laura, seeing Marvin on the couch, takes action and punishes Marvin by confining him to the garage. Meanwhile, Laura is deeply distraught by the loss of Patterson's poems, and she suggests ways to piece them back together, since Patterson saved all the torn fragments. She tries to uplift his spirits, but Patterson remains seemingly unaffected, unlike Laura, who is deeply impacted by the incident. After all, Laura is Patterson's biggest fan and audience. Leaving the house, Patterson embarks on a solitary walk through the tranquil, an almost dreamlike city. Along his path, he unexpectedly encounters Everett, the man whose emotional turmoil he witnessed the previous night. Patterson approaches Everett, extending an apology for the events that unfolded. They exchange pleasantries, and Patterson inquires about Everett's well-being, sensing that he, too, is troubled. As their paths diverge, Patterson finds himself sitting on a bench near the enchanting waterfalls, lost in contemplation as he gazes into the distance. A stranger in a suit approaches, asking if he can join Patterson on the bench. The man takes out a book written in Japanese, and to Patterson's surprise, a section of William Carlos Williams' epic poem, Patterson, is included within its pages. The Japanese man engages Patterson in a series of thought-provoking questions, particularly intrigued by Patterson's interest in his book. Patterson becomes reticent, evading some of the inquiry. The stranger wonders if Patterson is from Patterson, New Jersey, and if he is familiar with the renowned poet William Carlos Williams. He further probes, asking if Patterson is a poet himself. Modestly, Patterson claims to be just a bus driver, dismissing the idea that he could be a poet. However, the Japanese man believes that poetry can be found in the most unexpected places, even in the life of a bus driver. Patterson laughs off the notion, seemingly unconvinced. To further make him believe, the Japanese man talks about Jean Dubuffet, who was a meteorologist at the top of the Eiffel Tower, and calls it poetic. The conversation shifts to Frank O'Hara, another poet known to Patterson, and the Japanese man shares that he expresses his life through poetry, showcasing his notebooks filled with Japanese verses. Yet, when translated into English, the same emotional depth fails to resonate. The Japanese man explains that he visited Patterson, a place not typically sought out by tourists, solely because of his admiration for William Carlos Williams. The stranger draws a parallel with Allen Ginsberg, who also hailed from Patterson. As their conversation comes to a close, the Japanese man bids farewell, returning to Osaka. But before departing, he presents Patterson with a gift, an empty notebook, symbolizing the boundless possibilities it holds. It is almost a symbolic gesture of giving a blank slate for Patterson to start again. As he walks away, the stranger calls Patterson's attention one last time, uttering a simple expression, aha. Inspired and touched by the encounter, Patterson takes out his pen and begins filling his new secret notebook with fresh collections of poems. He gazes at the sky, starting with the first poem, titled, The Line. With a renewed perspective and a sense of purpose, Patterson embraces the upcoming week, prepared to repeat the routine of his life, finding solace and meaning in his poetry and the world around him. On Monday, Patterson resumes his familiar routine. He shares a goodbye kiss with Laura before getting out of bed, possibly grabbing a bowl of cereal for breakfast. He spends some time writing, delving into his thoughts and emotions, before heading out to drive the bus. Throughout his journey, he overhears conversations among the passengers, offering glimpses into their lives and stories. He encounters another pair of twins. During his lunch break, Patterson finds a moment of respite, enjoying a peaceful pause in his day. Eventually, he completes his bus route and returns home. He shares the events of his day with Laura, recounting the conversations he overheard and the experiences he had. The couple engage in a meaningful discussion, exchanging insights and perspectives. For dinner, Laura surprises Patterson with one of her inventive recipes, showcasing her boundless creativity in the kitchen. 
After dinner, Patterson takes Marvin for a walk, relishing in the companionship of his loyal four-legged friend, and seemingly having forgiven him for the previous incident. They stroll through the familiar streets, observing the world around them. Following his walk, Patterson visits the local bar, where he engages in conversation with Don and the other regular patrons. They share stories, trivia, and banter, forming connections and finding solace in their shared experiences. Finally, Patterson returns home, ready to rest and recharge for the next day.